Tokenization is very, very important in natural language processing. This allows you to take sentences or any block of text and break it into its component parts. This is not quite as easy as it sounds. And it's a very, very deep area of natural language processing. Consider this as a test. Okay, you would break that into this is a and test. So four tokens. But what about the period on the end? Maybe that's a token itself. Maybe it's a stop word. Stop words are unimportant tokens that you're typically sort of removing. Uh, punctuation you might be removing. So it that becomes certainly a question. Okay, but what about this? That might be relatively easy. You do have to deal with the comma. Here you get into some strangeness. If I put a period between U, S, and A, then it's not these individual letters that are tokens, it's this whole thing is a token. Versus if I just leave the periods out. PhD is similar. PH dot D uh, dot, or is it just PhD? And hyphens, other things as well. So there's a lot of factors to take into consideration if you were going to write code to tokenize yourself. That's why it's generally recommend that you don't. So here we're going to use more transformers and sentence pieces. So we're going to break the sentences into their component pieces. And you can see all the installation work there. And we're going to use another distillabert uh, model to, to make use of this. So here is where we're actually tokenizing it. So it is taking this text and tokenizing it into well-known token numbers that we have. And then the attention mask is just saying which of these you actually pay attention to, which is all of them in this case. So this is, these are the words in tokenization is easy that were tokened. And you'll notice too, it's not word by word. I was saying that earlier, but that's an oversimplification. It's typically about three letters or so is an individual token. And this, when you use large language models, are how you're billed. You're billed on how many tokens you send through, interestingly enough. So the result of these, these are the input IDs. These are the subword indexes. So tokens are subwords. They're not entire words. And each index uh, usually identifies that, or each index uniquely identifies a subword. The attention mask just shows which ones you are paying attention to. You can convert these IDs into, to into uh, their text. So you'll see CLS token Izine. So you can see that's a suffix sort of thing. So token is just one word. So this is kind of stemming it as well, getting each of the words down to its individual stem. Text is easy. And then the period is a... Uh, it is a token as well. You can see there's a SEP and a class. Those are two individual special, special tokens. We'll see them in just a second. CLS is typically the beginning, by the way, and SEP is separator or the end. You can get hold of all of the various special tokens, and you can see their sentence beginning for CLS, uh, sequence end, padding, Unknown token, that sounds fun, and mask out tokens. Not used really in this in this book or the course, but they do have some uses. So here we're taking text. This movie is great. I hated this movie, waste of time, epic question mark. So kind of awesome, horrible, eh, are are these. And we can take each of these and we can get the individual tokens for those. You can see the attention mask is useful because we make all of these input sentences be the same length of tokens, So, but not every token is actually used in it because some are shorter than others. And that leaves you basically with the input IDs for, for each of these. So these token numbers become very, very important. And the fact that they're not actual words, this does mitigate a bit the large language model or other model, not knowing the word that you're specifying because really these are just pieces of words. And these pieces are very common and can often combine to create unknown words. And this can, this can be very helpful because maybe when I say tokenizing, maybe it's never seen the word tokenizing, 
but it knows what token is, maybe, and it knows what an isine means, at least in a lot of words. So this is how it can gain some additional understanding beyond simply words that it's just seen before. And believe me, humans do the same thing. If you see an uh, ing or an ed ending on a word, which are common in English, you're probably forming some notions of what that word means, even if you've never seen it before.